Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 435. Arimidex, an aromatase inhibitor, is not just for breast cancer anymore. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Dr. Maupin, you were telling me the other day that you had a male client that you saw and for various reasons decided rather than give him testosterone replacement because he wasn't old enough and he didn't really have a loss of testosterone, but he had some issues, Mm -hmm. that rather than do the testosterone replacement, which is the main focus of your work, you would give him a medicine called uh, Arimidex, Arimidex, which is an aromatase inhibitor. Mm -hmm. Inhibitor? Inhibitor, Mm -hmm. yes. And that he then went to his regular physician some weeks after that and was telling her that this is what he was doing. And she, according to him, went absolutely crazy. She was yelling and went out in the hallway and was and yelling at the other doctors about how crazy you were. And how giving, crazy he was. And how crazy he was for, for taking, taking it. <laughs> because it's a breast cancer drug. And he didn't have breast cancer. Uh, and so why would he be taking this drug? And so you were upset, as you legitimately should be, that this doctor was criticizing you and your practice to him, to your because patient. Because she's Because she doesn't know uninformed. the information that you know. And that's she's, what upsets you so much. She's uninformed, and she didn't look it up. And she didn't go she's and try to do any re- research. She's not yeah. current. So, yeah. so because she's not current, she's criticizing me. Right. You know, so... Well, that's the easiest... You know. That's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. However, it was very disturbing to my patient, and he was livid. He said, I walked out. He said, and I am never walking back into that office of that doctor again if she is that stupid. (laughs) I just went. We're quoting him. Yeah. I just went, okay, because I had given him things to read about. Right. Arimidex. He knew that it was used off-label, which is what we say when the FDA approves a drug for one reason, but we find other reasons to use it because it works and because the pharmacology and the physiology is appropriate for the use in other areas of medicine. So, Arimidex is is what's called a third level or third layer of the development of aromatase inhibitors. Mm -hmm. And it was developed and is used primarily as a way to reduce the amount of surgical interventions necessary for dealing with breast cancer, as I understand the article that we read. it also prevents prevents recurrence. recurrence. So... That is the primary use, and and the FDA approved it for Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But physicians are allowed to use their own training and judgment Mm -hmm. and apply some of these medicines in other circumstances. Mm -hmm. And frequently we find what are called serendipitous discoveries. Mm -hmm. That Who knew? But it works for this. And so, you know, if if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. If it works for this treatment, Mm -hmm. then then let's do that. But we still think of Remedex primarily in terms of treating women who are concerned about breast cancer. That is its main focus. Yeah, and they're just for estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, which means... One type of breast a cancer. A type of breast cancer that is stimulated by estrogen. Not all breast cancers are. Right. So this particular type responds to Remedex because what Remedex does is it lowers the estrogen it, that are that's made in your tissues. Estrogen is actually made in the tissues, and the estrogen that is circulating in your bloodstream. So, what it does is it prevents the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. So it's an aromatase inhibitor. It inhibits an enzyme. And so that's what aromatase inhibitor means. Right. It, it, it's a, aromatase is an enzyme. An enzyme. A, a specific enzyme. Right. Of it's which a there are thousands. Very specific. Yeah. Enzyme that. Is its role in the body is to um, break down testosterone into estrogen. So, so did I understand the article that we read correctly when I say that it, that it said, or am I remembering it correctly? Seventy percent of the tumor in a breast tissue tissue uh, is created in the tissue. It doesn't come from the estrogen. Doesn't come from elsewhere. Right. The estrogen. I'm not saying that, help help right. me say that right. The estrogen is made not in the ovary or not in, not from an um, 
any other source except the tissue source. The, the breast itself has aromatase in it, and people with the highest aromatase in their breast tissue have the most estrogen, which then makes the uh, breast cancer that's sensitive to estrogen come back more, more frequently. So it doesn't help to lower the overall volume of estrogen in the body because the estrogen is generated in that breast tissue. Right. So when we take out ovaries and we remove the source of estrogen, we're still not <laughs> removing the estrogen that's made in the breast tissue. Estrogen's also made in bone. It's also made in fat. And a lot of it's made in fat because it, they all have aromatase in them. So is there a lot of fat in the breast tissue? Then? Yeah. Okay. The fat is basically um, a sweat gland. The breast is a sweat gland, huh. but it has fat around it. All right. So it's a specialized sweat gland, but it has fat all all around the ducts. And, is again, fat. and again, we're not talking about all women, all breasts. We're talking about the ones that have this particular estrogen positive, re receptor estrogen side. receptor positive. Okay. So. So. But again. that's most of. The, but many of the breast cancers that we see are those, and they're the most treatable. Okay. Because we've looked for drugs like Arimidex to decrease the conversion of, of androgens, testosterone, or uh, there's other androgens that come from the adrenal gland. Sits, they sit, the adrenals sit on top of your kidneys in the back. They're small, very active, very necessary glands. But they make a, a, an androgen that then can be converted into estrogens as well. So that can happen in the breast. It can use either testosterone or it can use other androgens to convert into estrogen. So that's what this drug stops. So if we decrease estrogen in the body and we decrease the ability to make it in the tissue, that starves the cancer cells. So we read an article in the Endocrine Journal that was about a 60-page scientific <laughs> treatise it was very complete. <laughs> tracing tracing the, the history of the recognition, the identification, the understanding of the enzyme process, the aromatase process, mm -hmm. and, and all the lab rats and, and bees and whatever they, they, <laughs> they used as, worked to on to, to do this. But they have truly found a miraculous thing in their, their ability to have a positive impact on breast cancer for these kinds of tumors. But we were discussing in terms of your male patient that there are other things that doctors then discover they can treat with these aromatase inhibitors. Because a lot of things occur in both men and women. A lot of illnesses are made worse or are created because of too much estrogen. Not a little estrogen, too much estrogen. Right. So we, we looked at how this works. And gynecologists went, whoa, lots of our diseases in gynecology are, are uh, stimulated by estrogen, like fibroids in the uterus and endometriosis in the pelvis and, and um, uh, let's excessive see. Excessive uterine bleeding. Excessive, yeah, we have a list excessive here, uterine bleeding and, and thick in, the thick lining gets thick under the influence of too much estrogen. So, and that can lead to uterine cancer. So and obesity? Obesity is one of the ones where... It, well, all of these tissues have aromatase in them. Uh -huh. So not only is it about the test of how much estrogen you have in your in your bloodstream, it's about what's in that in that tissue. And so it's really hard to test because mm -hmm. you could have very little estrogen going on inside uh, in your body, but you're still growing fibroids. We can't test the tissue, mm -hmm. so so we have to use Arimidex to shut the fibroids down. So, because that stops the estrogen in the tissue. What about obesity? Is that, uh, does estrogen cause fat? Yeah. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, it, there's, there, most cycles in the body, there's one hormone or one communicator that stimulates and another one that, um, that then turns off a process. Okay. So we have one that stimulates, one that turns off. Well, in obesity. Kind of like red light, green light. Right. Exactly. Okay. So in obesity, we have this problem where when you, you gain a little weight, of course, the American diet brings you there. Yeah. You gain a little weight, and then your fat makes estrogen. It has aromatase in it. So okay. it makes a lot of estrogen, which then makes more fat, which then makes more estrogen, <laughs> 
which then makes more fat. There's no turnoff. So, so that's why people get more and more and more obese no matter what they eat. If they are more obese, are they more at risk for breast cancer? Yes. In but, fact, that's the highest risk for breast cancer. And really? that's, it has nothing to do with taking estrogen. It has a lot to do with making it okay. and it being obese. All right. So Arimidex is a wonderful way to prevent breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It basically goes to the tissue and blocks it at the breast, but it also decreases the obesity. A lot of times I use Arimidex in patients with a lot of belly fat. Wow. So it's gross oversimplification. You know, mm, they that, recommend yeah. that, you, that you take an aspirin a day to prevent heart attacks. Right. Would you recommend that most women should uh, should be on Arimidex? Or most women who have a genetic possibility, probability? Most, that, most women who have a genetic... A genetic, a strong genetic history of estrogen positive breast cancer would benefit from yeah, taking Arimidex. Absolutely, but not high dose, not every day. It would, it would be like every third day, which would keep because it has a long half life. It has long lasts a long time, so you wouldn't want a huge dose because you don't want to wipe out estrogen in all your body. You need estrogen for your bones and Including your brain men. and. And, and men, the same way. You don't yeah. want to wipe out the estrogen. You just want to shut it down somewhat. Now, having Regulate said that, the speed, the production. now that we know that the tissues mm -hmm. make estrogen, mm -hmm. we can't really tell. I mean, if we shut it down in the bloodstream, we don't know that we've shut it down in, in the, the tissue. In the breast tissues. Right. Right. So, or in the fat cells. Or in the, the fat the cells. The only way we can tell is if somebody's breasts start shrinking, if somebody's belly starts shrinking, we know that we've decreased the aromatase activity in the breast or in the belly. Okay. But we don't know that it's gone. We don't know that we've starved it. Mm -hmm. But but we have no test for that yet, unfortunately. So so coming back to the story of this one male client, <laughs> we, we, you've been talking about women. the impact of this on women mm -hmm. and, and all these various things, including uh, short stature and insulin resistance. Right. So So, so this is both men and women. Um, women who go through uh, puberty early and make a lot of estrogen early have a shorter stature than people than women who have me uh, menarche or the beginning of their periods later because estrogen closes the epiphysis in your bones. It stops the part of your, the growth plate in your bones. It seals it. I've always said that, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. So... Um, <laughs> So what happens with men is the same thing, yeah. that when men make a lot of testosterone and they make estrogen out of it, then that seals the growth plates. So we start with testosterone, which we make, mm -hmm. and then we convert the testosterone itself that mm -hmm. we've made into estrogen? Into estrogen, and that seals the growth plates. So when we see that in a young man who's short, like we would look at a bone... A bone. a bone age. If the bone age is beyond, it hasn't yet sealed the bones, but it's higher, like somebody who's 12, bone age is 15, you know that they are going to stop growing soon. I remember when my son was six, seven, he was on the bottom end of the growth curve. We'd go mm -hmm. to the doctor's office and she'd show us this graph mm -hmm. and he'd be right over here. And at one point she even had us go to Children's Hospital mm -hmm. to have his hand x-rayed mm -hmm. because... Whatever well, they that's, could they, tell from they that. can tell from the wrist. And, and what they told us was, he's going to be a late bloomer, but he will get to be six feet tall or more. And he is. But it won't happen until he's in college. Right. And it didn't. Right. I mean, we, we have pictures of him standing next to his best friend. It looks like Mutt and Jeff in the cartoons. Mm -hmm. And now they're very close to each other. Right. Uh, but that they did it from an x-ray of the hand. The right. So the if hand. they'd looked at the hand and he was short, uh, on the lowest part of the growth yeah. scale and he looked older, not younger, on the on the growth plates. Yeah, they didn't they explain all that. Have, they just said, they "Oh, would, we know from this." Well, they didn't have to, because Ooh. they knew he'd not be okay. Not when they were talking to me. Yeah. Now, if, no, they didn't have to because he was going to be okay. Okay. If they had a child that had the reverse, and they had to give him a Remedex to stop that estrogen from blo from closing his bones, they would have to explain all this to you. So, would they have known that fifteen years ago? Has Remedex been around that yeah. long? Okay. I used it 15 years ago in my patients who had a, um, fibroids. And I mean, I used it off label from the very beginning because 
there were several articles about it, plus people needed something to stop their fibroids from growing and to stop their endometriosis from hurting. So there are other reasons that you give it to me. And one is about the growth rate and their stature. Mm -hmm. One is obesity. Yes. Is that just belly fat or is that total obesity? Total obesity. Uh, but belly fat works the best. Okay. I mean, it works the best on belly fat, but, but just being obese is this positive cycle that doesn't have an end point and you need to stop it somehow. So I use Arimidex in men to stop the estrogen. Usually I get a blood level of really high estrogen as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I use Arimidex for that to help them lose weight. I also use metformin so that they're, they become insulin resistant by the time they're obese. Right. So I want to fix both things at once to give them more um, nor, more a better outcome for the time they spend. Lower the risk of diabetes and, and, and I, help them lose weight. It, I mean, these things all are going to make this person die early of a heart attack and or of heart failure of diabetes. I mean, by by doing this, when we can make a difference and and backing backing this up into a more healthy body. Which is your argument for giving it to a male client. Right. Well, that's one of my arguments. That's, yeah. That's that. One of my arguments is for obesity, but this particular client wasn't obese. He just had a really high level of estrogen. He was, he was clearly, his total testosterone was okay, but his free testosterone was low. So, so the difference is, we've ta said this before, but we'll say it again, the total testosterone is that proves to me, the only thing it proves to me is that you're still making testosterone. If it's above 400, you're still making adequate amounts of testosterone. So your testicles are working and your pituitary is still working to stimulate that to happen. Mm -hmm. So that system is intact. But if you're free testosterone, that's the only part you feel. Everything else is, is completely um, erased. You just feel... In your body, the only part that works is free testosterone. And free testosterone is the part that is most important to me. If your free testosterone is low, you feel terrible. It's as if you didn't make any testosterone at all. So this person was, he did everything right. He was, I mean, he was obsessive about being healthy. Mm -hmm. He did everything I said, thank God. Yeah. And he, so he, he should have been applauded about his about how well he he managed everything I asked him to do, yeah. but I gave him the Arimidex only because his free testosterone was so low he didn't feel it. He felt depressed. He had lots of other symptoms. So of your low theory testosterone. was that he was converting the testosterone that he was making into estrogen, right? And so the Arimidex would inhibit or reduce that, mm -hmm. which would give him more testosterone that would be usable, right? Which more would help free him be healthier, right? But it works a second way. Yeah. Arimidex goes to the pituitary gland and stimulates your production of LH. LH is the stimulator for testosterone. So it did two things. We use it in infertility to, to, with guys that have low testosterone production I, and that leads to low sperm production. So we, we give them Arimidex just to make the LH go up. That mm -hmm. comes from their pituitary. The LH goes to the testicle, makes the testicle work harder and make more testosterone. And so he made more total testosterone, and he made um, more free testosterone. So he felt better. So LH is a luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone and, from the pituitary. And what does that mean? And luteinizing hormone means it's it's really the same in both men and women, but it does different things. Obviously, luteinizing hormone in women um, makes where the egg popped out make pro progesterone and testosterone, and in men it works in the Seminif works in the seminiferous tubules to to make I have to go back to anatomy to make sperm, but it also makes it also stimulates testosterone production. So it's essentially one of the green lights we were talking right. about. Right, it it's says, a green Here, light. Turn this on, do this. Right, okay. right. It's a green light, and and Arimidex by by its action on the pituitary in the brain. Right, actually makes that stimulated. Now release the LH. Right. Now, okay. the caveats to that are, if I have somebody who comes in with a really high LH, meaning it's already elevated and no, no testosterone, right. that means that the testicles aren't working. So okay. no matter what I do to, with a Remedex, it's not going to work. Yeah, you can't send them a green light. So I can't give them a green light. They've already got a green light, and it's not working. Yeah. So I can't do that. Another caveat is if you're over 50 and you have this picture... Arimidex doesn't really work. So I have a hard time 
doing that. I give it to some of my men who are on testosterone who tend to convert a lot of their testosterone into estrogen. Just to prevent the conversion. Just to prevent the conversion. And that's kind of a genetic thing, but the fatter they are, the more they convert. Yeah. So, so I have to look at them too to, and try to get them to lose weight so that they will need less testosterone. So one more thing in terms of, of pre prescribing this for men, mm -hmm. uh, insulin resistance which is tied in with the whole obesity right. cycle. Right, so, so insulin resistance means, well, that, that's a whole other thing that we have to describe, but, but insulin resistance means that your body does not accept insulin, which is carrying your blood sugar, into the cell. So the blood sugar in the blood circulates to the cells, which gives them energy. Right, but they're and piggybacked into the cell with insulin. Yes. So it require your blood sugar that you have requires insulin to take it into the cell. So that's why if you have diabetes, if you have type one diabetes and no insulin, your blood sugar goes up and your cells are starving for energy. Right. So that's why you need insulin to help carry it into the cell. If you have pre-diabetes or insulin resistance, that means your body does not accept the insulin, therefore the sugar. And it just bounces off, and what does it do with that sugar? It makes fat. Okay. So that's that's so that's, that whole that's obesity how that cycle that process storm. works. Yeah. And um, Arimidex is something. It is a sensitizer to insulin. I mean, that's probably one of the. It has several mechanisms, but that's probably the most important mechanism for for losing weight. So I I find this a fascinating story because this happens more often than it should, and not just with the Remedex, but with other treatments that you provide mm -hmm. as well, that, yeah. that someone comes to you as a specialist and receives a treatment. Then they mm -hmm. go back to their regular physician for regular medical issues, and many of those physicians don't know about what you do mm -hmm. and don't accept what you do, mm -hmm. and so they get really reactive mm -hmm. when, they, when they see, oh my gosh, you're doing this, why are you doing this, mm -hmm. who gave you this, that's stupid, that's wrong, that's mm -hmm. bad. So. Because they just don't know, they don't or they know. haven't read, or they're too busy to read, or it's not their specialty. Yes, exactly, and or, which is understandable, but problematic. You know, it used to be that when when people had unusual treatments, and they'd come to me and they'd say, "What do you think about this?" I'd say, "I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that doctor." Is that hard for doctors to say? I guess it is for other doctors. It wasn't hard for me to say. Yeah. I mean, I remember when HCG diets first came out. Well, HCG is uh, the pregnancy hormone. But HCG is also used to stimulate LH in men. And it's used to for weight loss in women and men. So people would come to me and say, what do you think about the HCG diet? And I'm like, I don't know anything about it, but HCG is a pregnancy hormone. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know how they were using it, and I didn't know what, why it worked. So you aren't going to give advice about it. So I went home, and I yeah. looked it up, well, and yeah. I read about it, and I went back always for these guys that don't have it in their literature i went back to physiology how does this work yeah. what it it mimics lh okay so then how does that work on the cells right. so that made sense and so when people would come in i'd say i don't know how it works in practice but i know how it works yeah <laughs> and it, you know tell me how it works when you come back from that doctor tell me how it worked yeah. you know that's that's a normal Confident answer. So to sum this up, <laughs> we were talking today about a story about a specific client, male client, who was given a drug that classically is understood as a female drug. Although there, are, as we've discussed today, many things that men can benefit from it as well. Which brings us to the issue of off-label prescriptions, mm -hmm. which is legal in mm -hmm. every way. It's 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 standard. Because Doctors they allow us to have a are brain. Are expected to do it, but a lot of doctors don't do very much of it. Uh, because they're worried about persecution, prosecution from the FDA. Uh, they but, can't, but the FDA can't do anything about that. Uh, they don't understand they it. They don't understand it, and they don't want to do it. But you are willing to do it, and, and many of the other anti-aging doctors do it. Or a lot of doctors do it and maybe not even know that they do it. Like you talk about gynecologists. So you, so in many ways, it's like cooking. I'm in, I'm in my kitchen, and I don't have... A recipe book. Baking soda. Yeah. I don't have baking soda, but I have baking powder. They have some of the similar contents. I don't want to go to the store. I'm, you know, pushed to make whatever these brownies. And so 
I look up in my book of science of cooking, what what makes the difference and how you could how you could change it. Yeah, right. And so I make baking powder in, into baking soda. So that's kind of what we're we're doing. Mm -hmm. Only we're yeah. we're using the same thing and we're using it in a different way, different dose. But when you don't have a solution to a problem and you don't have the right tools, the FDA hasn't approved the right tools for something, then we have to go out on a limb and do what some, I mean, there was research for this before I ever used it. Right. I looked up the research. And you have to use that research and you have to figure out if it was done right. And then you have to use it in the appropriate patients and say, I'm just trying this to see we have no other solution. We've got nothing. When we had, you know, 30 years ago, when we didn't have anything for libido or yeah. thin skin on old ladies' bottoms that got like bed sores, <coughs> we used testosterone and Vaseline because we didn't know anything else and it worked. I remember when I was a child, I'd ask my dad, you know, why? He'd say something. I'd say, why? And he said, because I said so. And that was the end of the conversation. Well, that's the FDA. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. The FDA That's said the that. the patriarchal governmental involvement. But at any rate, hopefully what you will take home from this conversation is that there are masculine and feminine uses, appropriate uses, off-label uses, for Remedex and aromatase inhibitors that not just the truly miraculous focus on the breast tissues that are, are sensitive to estrogen. So hopefully that's good news for you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.